So in the third lesson on statistical inferences, uh, we consider alternative way of testing hypotheses using a p-value and also I will come back to the confidence intervals. So uh, we have already considered in the previous lesson the, the classic t-test and now I will also then, then expand it to the two alternative ways of testing, uh, testing uh, hypotheses starting from the so-called p-value. P obviously refers to the probability. So um, recall the the significance test from from uh, from uh, statistical testing. So the p value is not uh, uh, at least in the present context. The p value is not uh, not available for any type of hypothesis. So it, when we when we read this kind of regression output, uh, uh, like in the case of t statistic, uh, it's it's restricted to the case of significant te significance test where the Null hypothesis is that there's no impact. So this beta coefficient is equal to zero. So, so we are in this present setting also for the p-value uh, is related to this kind of significance test. So uh, uh, I mentioned already before that, uh, that uh, we then need to compare this value of this uh, test statistic t to the critical value of the, of the t-distribution. And uh, one... Uh, not so convenient feature of this t-statistic, uh, which is part of the usual regression output, like in this uh, hedonic model of housing market example, that, uh, that uh, for example, here Excel doesn't really produce you the critical value that you need to compare to. So you need another source, some, some statistical table, or you can use Excel, whatever, but you need to find this, uh, this critical value of the, of the t-statistic uh, uh, from other sources. So in that sense, this p-value that is also reported here next to the t-stat, and this is also often the case in, in, uh, in statistical software, also other than, other than Excel. So if the p-value is reported, you can directly then, uh, then use that one to, to, uh, to test hypotheses. I'll come back to this slide shortly, but I'll first uh, explain you what's the meaning of the p-value. So... One, another thing is that if you if you if you want to test significance of the t statistic uh, at different levels of significance, so five percent, one percent, or perhaps five percent significance levels, then you need to need to then uh, uh, find these critical values separately for for different significance levels. So, in that sense, I personally like very much the p value because you can directly read that uh, that uh, uh, whatever the significance level might be that. Uh, so the p-value indicates the probability of uh, of obtaining the the absolute value of t that is higher uh, when when the null hypothesis is true. So 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 uh, in that sense, uh, p-value is directly the smallest significance level alpha at which the null hypothesis can be rejected. So if you think about the interpretation, this lowest uh, third point is is is. Uh, Good to keep in mind. So it's it's literally the smallest significance level alpha at which the null hypothesis can be can be rejected. So let's go back to this uh, empirical example and and practice a little bit. So in that if if we go back to this uh, uh, this uh, idea of significance test. So so most cases the null hypothesis. Uh, uh, of course, the null hypothesis is stated that from this kind of skeptical point of view that, uh, that uh, there is no impact whatsoever with the size in square meters or bedrooms or age. So uh, usually empirical researcher uh, wants to or is interested in rejecting the null hypothesis. Okay, so the null hypothesis is something that, uh, that uh, is stated there to be rejected, that, that, that we want to show that there's actually some significant impact with our explanatory variables. So in that sense, a typical researcher would then like to see that the t-statistic is relatively high or the absolute value of the t-statistic is, is relatively high. Of course, a t-statistic can be negative, as we mentioned already before. So in contrast, then, then uh, if you want to reject the null, hypo null hypothesis, so we want to show that there is some impact, uh, then we like to see that the p-value is, is, uh, is small. So when we compare the t-statistic to the critical value of the t-distribution, then p-value we can compare directly to this uh, uh, significance level alpha. 
okay? So if we take, for example, 5% significance level, we are asking, is the p-value less than the 5% significance level? And in this, this, uh, these results, you can see that if you look at the p-value, all of them, all of the p-values are very, very small. So it means that uh, at the 5% significance level, we can, we can reject the null hypothesis of, uh, of no impact in case of all of these, uh, these variables. So in all of these cases, uh, uh, we can say that all of these explanatory variables are statistically significant at 5% significance level. And indeed, there's no reason to, to then uh, if, if go to the statistical tables. Uh, we can even, if we put this 1% uh, significance level, then, then we still see that all of these, uh, these p-values are smaller. So, so we can reject the null hypothesis even, even uh, at 1% significance level. Uh, in this particular example, the case is very clear. So all of, all of these, uh, these uh, uh, variables have... Uh, coefficients that are very, very far from zero and standard errors are comparatively small. So in all of these cases, this, uh, all of these explanatory variables are highly significant. Uh, it could be, of course, the case that, uh, that uh, using the t-statistic, uh, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So then also the p-value can indicate that, okay, is it almost uh, rejected or is it really, really, really hopeless? So sometimes uh, we can take the significance level alpha of uh, 10%. So, so uh, in statistical terminology, we would say that, uh, that uh, if we can reject the null hypothesis at 10% significance, then, then uh, we can use the term almost significant. So, of course, uh, it's a big difference if the, if, uh, if the p-value is... Uh, uh, is uh, 8% or if it's 80%. So of course, if there's almost no explanatory power, then the p-value would be close to one. So, so the small value of uh, small p-value indicates that, uh, that uh, this, uh, this uh, variable is, is uh, different from zero, uh, or this variable has more than impact and just zero impact, and it's not just, uh, just a coincidence, and we can be fairly, fairly confident in that. So, and again, this usual terminology is that, that, that if we reject the null hypothesis in the case of significance test, whether we use t-statistic or p-value, then we, we say that, for example, size in square meters uh, is statistically significant, and we also indicate the significance level, let's say 5% significance level. So that's why the p-value is very convenient. We don't need to use any any statistical tables we just read directly or we compare this p-value directly with this uh, significance level alpha whereas t statistic we need to compare to the critical values of the t distribution um, finally i also also uh, discussed the possibility of testing hypotheses using confidence intervals so so earlier I introduced the confidence interval mainly as this kind of um, uh, indicator of the of the possible estimation error in our our in the in the context of uh, interval estimation. But uh, in fact, we also get exactly the same results if we compare it to the to the confidence intervals. So because this kind of confidence intervals that are created are are already given in Excel or Stata or other statistical software. They are they are always uh, applicable only to two-sided tests. So one-sided tests are not uh, not available. And um, it applies to not only to significance tests, but also also we can we can use it for testing theoretical restrictions. And in many cases, actually, confidence intervals can be a convenient way of uh, of uh, approaching the testing. So. It's very simple, actually. When we have this uh, beta asterisk that is stated in the in the null hypothesis, it could be that beta asterisk is equal to zero if we talk about significance tests, but it could be whatever whatever beta asterisk. So the question we ask is: uh, Is this beta asterisk contained within the uh, confidence interval or not? If it is contained within the con confidence interval, then we can accept the null hypothesis. However, if this uh, 
beta asteric that is stated by the null hypothesis is outside the confidence interval, then we reject the null hypothesis. And interestingly, this way of, uh, of testing the hypothesis is always uh, gives you the same result as, as, the, as the corresponding t-test or p-value. So it's completely equivalent way of, uh, of testing the hypothesis. So let's, let's make a little practical exercise. So, of course, uh, think about uh, the significance test where the beta asteric is just zero. So we are testing that uh, is the coefficient uh, uh, significantly different from zero. And uh, let's take again the size of uh, apartment in square meters. So now we are asking that is, is the value of zero included in the confidence interval or not? So the confidence interval for size in square meters is uh, lower bound is uh, positive 5,258 and upper bound is uh, 8,686. So clearly zero is not within that interval. So zero falls outside the interval. So therefore we can reject the null hypothesis that, uh, that this uh, true beta coefficient for size in square meter would be equal to zero. Let's take another example when we have a negative value. So if you take about number of bedrooms and, um, and uh, the null hypothesis, let's take again a significance test and state the null hypothesis that there's no impact. So this corresponding beta coefficient would be equal to zero. So now we, when, we, when we test the significance, we will also uh, look at the confidence interval and ask ourselves, is zero contained within the confidence interval or not? In this case, of course, this uh, lower bound uh, minus 105,952 is obviously less than zero, but so is also the upper bound. So, so upper bound is minus 24,413. So although both of them are negative, we also see that zero is not included in the, in the, in the confidence interval. So therefore, we can also say that uh, the number of bedrooms is uh, statistically significant explanatory variable at 5% significance level. But notice that we can test any, any kind of hypothesis. So for example, if some, if some uh, previous studies would claim that, uh, that uh, uh, marginal impact of size in square meters in, in uh, this uh, Tapiola area in Espo is 5,000 euros per square meter, we could then look, okay, is 5,000 contained within this confidence interval? And then we could see that, okay, 5,000 actually is uh, outside the confidence interval, so therefore we could also reject the null hypothesis that the marginal impact of size in square meters is equal to 5,000. So this applies to any, any hypothesis, but uh, only two-sided testing is, is possible. So at this point, then I'm, I'm re ready to then make a so summary and compare these uh, advantages and disadvantages of the three approaches that we have considered. So firstly, if we start from this t-test that we considered first, uh, so perhaps the biggest advantage is that uh, the t-test we can use for both one-sided and two-sided tests. So, so at least uh, the p-value and confidence intervals uh, provided in this kind of standard regression output cannot be used for one-sided tests. So if you want to use one-sided test, you need to go to the t-statistic. Uh, in principle, t-statistic uh, can use any, any level of uh, significance alpha, but of course, uh, it's not very practically convenient that any time that we go for, uh, any time we change the significance level alpha, we know we need to go back to these uh, statistical tables or Excel or whatever to find these critical values. Um, Another point that I want to still mention that uh, that uh, these uh, t-stats are reported only for the significance level, significance test that uh, that uh, that where this uh, null hypothesis is stating that uh, that uh, beta is equal to zero. Uh, so when you want to calculate the t-test for the theoretical restriction, so then you need to calculate the t-statistic separately and compare it to the to the critical value. But it's not very difficult to do as we as we discussed earlier. So then if we move to the p-value, then uh, the biggest advantage of the p-value is that, uh, that you can compare it to directly to the significance level. So you don't need to go separately to the statistical tables or Excel or whatever to find these uh, uh, critical values. So you can directly see that uh, 
what is the smallest significance level at which the null hypothesis can be rejected. So this is particularly suitable for, for significance tests and uh, the p-values reported as a part of regression outputs are also only for two-sided tests. However, of course, the main principle, so, so main, main principle applies to anything. So it, it's nowadays quite common if there's some statistical test and also report the p-value. And it can be, of course, calculated for any kind of uh, hypothesis testing. So in that sense, it's good to know that uh, how to read p-values because they, you might encounter them in many different contexts not necessarily in regression analysis. And finally, even though the confidence intervals are usually used for this kind of interval estimation and kind of used as a, as a kind of measure for the, uh, for the um, error margin in, the, in our estimates, it can be also used also for, for testing hypotheses. And uh, in the confidence interval, we can apply it for for significance tests or theoretical restrictions, because we directly compare this uh, statement of the null hypothesis, this beta asteric, and we look at this, this, is this beta asteric contained in the confidence interval? So only restrictions are that it's, it's uh, restricted to the two-sided tests, and then of course uh, uh, we cannot change the confidence level, or otherwise we need to calculate the confidence interval again. So those are the, the main, main downfalls of the, of the confidence interval in, in hypothesis testing. So in practice, uh, whichever approach you use, you would, you would get, the, get the same results. It's mainly about the matter of convenience that, uh, that uh, uh, for example, when I, when I first time see the regression results, then typically I just look at the p-values to see that which, which, which variables are statistically significant and at what kind of significance level uh, if there are some kind of more more uh, theoretical restrictions that I want to test then 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 t test becomes uh, important if I if I want to use one-sided test then I would go to go to t test so so that that's mainly depending on on what what's the purpose of uh, of testing but uh, but uh, Typically, I, I, I look at the, the coefficients and their signs and the p-value first and then, then proceed to more, more detailed uh, uh, interpretations and analysis of the results. So, as the final topic, I want to also clarify a little bit further the interpretation of the statistical test and I will talk about the power and size of the test. Thanks for your attention.